This is the third in the mini lecture series for week two of the University of Toronto course on Law and Aging. Before you, you have the slide on the power and control wheel as it reflects particularly to older adults. You will see that this came out of work done in the women's movement and many of you may be very familiar with this wheel. And you'll see the different forms of abuse uh, spoked on it in the green spoke and at the center is this notion of power and control. So you can see along the way the, in red, commentary about how the abuser is acting. So you'll see, for instance, under the psychological abuse section, it says they use the privilege of their relationship to demean the other person. Under emotionally abuse, uh, you can see that there's exploitation and there's threatening. You'll see as well uh, about targeting vulnerabilities. There may be denial of access to spiritual events and traditions. Uh, there may be ridiculing of cultural values, there could be using of other family members, and above all, isolation, particularly for seniors, is one of the most difficult forms of a condition to come up against. We know that isolation is one of the greatest causes of depression in older adults, and that with less isolation comes a better quality of life. You'll see the different forms of abuse there as well, and across the top it says physical, violent, and sexual. I would offer that these forms of abuse where one is found, one has to be very, very careful to mine down appropriately and see if other forms of abuse are actually present. We know that older adults are more likely to disclose financial abuse than any other form of abuse. If you mine down a bit from financial abuse, you may find some form of emotional and psychological abuse. The least likely to be disclosed is sexual abuse for reasons which uh, are perhaps unsurprising. Many older adults also grew up in a time where sexuality was not overtly discussed and there may be uh, no real words for some of the things that are happening. People don't report because they're concerned about being seen as crazy, <coughs> excuse me, being seen as somebody who isn't reliable and many will fear that they will be taken away in some way. What we know is that these are actually quite reasonable fears. And in Canada, despite our social safety net, the chances of older adults actually being questioned about their mental capacity is high when they disclose abuse and neglect. So when we look at whether or not it's a reasonable concern about whether they should disclose or not disclose, evidence suggests that indeed it is a reasonable concern. We have uh, better and better networks around abuse and neglect prevention and I provide you with some uh, links that you can connect with in your communities as well. And the body of work around elder abuse and neglect is growing. The power and control wheel is one way that you can think about the core aspects of abuse and neglect, but it is not the only one. To review, moving to the next slide, indicating common power and control dynamics. You'll see that very commonly with seniors, there's targeting and grooming of victims. This is particularly true of the new best friend who uh, connects with an older adult, or indeed it may be a relative who typically wasn't involved but now becomes much more involved, or it may be former stranger abuse who then becomes, as I say, connected within a community. So there's very often this undue influence, and financial exploitation is, a, as I say, a leading indicator in this. There can be charm, manipulation, and there's always excuses found in this case. One of the indicators is that there may be the appearance of willing participation, but they may be engaged in activities that would ordinarily be not ones that they would engage in or might go against their common practices. An example might be uh, a sudden desire to take out a lot of cash withdrawals from a bank, where previously they were people who are very cautious about keeping their cash in their accounts. It may be that they're engaged in a different form of social event than they have ever been before. Perhaps a new faith or a new club that they may be engaged in or engaging in kinds of risky behavior that is unusual. Now, I will offer that all people 
who are mentally capable are certainly able to engage in risky behavior, that's right. And risky behavior by itself is not an indicator of lack of cognitive impairment, but sometimes it can be an indicator of undue influence, vulnerability, and abuse. When you're talking to older adults, there may be trauma reactions that you see, which may be an indicator of power and control dynamics. They may have physical impairments. They may have headaches. They may indicate fear. They might try to cover things up. They might be actively in denial. So looking for almost shock-like states or active denial can indeed show that there is an area of concern. We're going to now move to recognizing elder abuse and neglect. So it, as we've talked about before, we're going to review physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional and psychological, financial abuse and exploitation, and neglect and self-neglect. But there are other areas as well. Chemical abuse, and that would be often giving some form of commonly antipsychotic medication or some type of tranquilizing medication to seniors so that they remain passive, as well as spiritual cultural abuse. And that may include active denial of practicing your faith, it may include some ridicule around practicing your faith, and it may include also making sure that the foods that you would ordinarily consume based on your faith and spiritual practices are not available. It's very important to understand that abuse may be a single incident or it may be a pattern. And so when we're looking at it, we have to think about, is this a one-off kind of case or is this perhaps indicating uh, a broader pattern? We'll now move to the next mini lecture, which will discuss types and indicators. Thank you.